Uh, so, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, we are going to we, we move on the last presentation. Uh, the title is a semi-autonomous mobile robot for environment surface uh, di dis uh, dis sorry disinfication definition <laughs> sorry against the SARS uh, COVID two. The presenter is uh, Hector Mont, Mr. Hector Mont. Okay. As uh, the last presenter. No, it's not show. I do have a video. Excuse me. We don't have a uh, pre recorded video. Okay. So it's as as a, as a last presenter, there is no pres last presenter. Sorry, one of the co-authors is there, Octavia. Hello. Hello. Sorry. Okay. okay. Are you presented? No. Yes, I am. Oh, please, uh, please prepare your uh, slide. Should I share the screen now? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, I can see your slide. Yeah, okay, it's good. Yeah, please. Okay. Well, yeah, good evening, everyone in Japan, and good morning to the rest of the world. Today, I'm going to be uh, presenting my, my team's uh, efforts in the last month about this project, about semi-autonomous mobile robots that uh, were designed and uh, tested in marketplaces and in several uh, in use cases that in the actual title is semi-autonomous model robots for environmental surfaces disinfections against COVID SARS-CoV-2. First, uh, I'm going to talk about some context about the project. This project was, uh, uh, this project won a call for proposals in early no, in late March 2020. The idea was to present a project that can uh, quickly respond to the COVID-19 uh, problem that the whole world had. So that it was proposed in late March, but it was executed in, in December later that year. The idea of the robot was to use a, a fogging disinfect this uh, fogging machine. Uh, that can uh, disinfect uh, surfaces and volumes quickly. And this was in contrast to uh, current efforts to use uh, ultraviolet, and specifically UVC, which can be very harmful to humans and to surfaces. And disinfectants can also be harmful, uh, especially when there's long-term exposure so the idea of using a robot to uh, deliver this disinfectant uh, is to minimize the personal uh, load and the disinfectant and to safeguard its, its health. Another advantage of ULB, which is a ultra low volume, uh, the technology that uses fogging, fogging machines, is that, is that you can use whichever disinfectant is the most appropriate at the time. So in, in one of the, our use cases, we, used, we, we wanted to uh, use a robot in marketplaces. So we need to use some sort of food safe disinfectants. And in places where there's, uh, there's a lot of uh, need of very high disinfection rates, like in hospitals, we can use more aggressive ones. 
I'm going to start first with the mechanical design. Uh, the design was uh, one of the requirements, firstly, because it was a, a, supposed to be a very fast development time. So we need something very modular and something that can be uh, priced uh, in a way that can, that can be easy to replicate each row we make. So uh, for the construction, we use an aluminum profile construction and some easily uh, laser cut uh, acrylic, acrylic panels that can uh, be uh, very fastly replicated with the current tool we had in the lab. And each robot had uh, at least these components, a um, uh, robot base, which in our case is a uh, base from Rover Robotics, uh, a battery, uh, that can feed the, the, the fogger, the ULB fogger. In our first version, we used an inverter because our fogger was AC, but in our second version, and uh, we found uh, a DC uh, fogger. And uh, an arm, then a two degree for freedom, two degree freedom uh, arm that can extend the workplace of the robot, uh, uh, ensuring that we can uh, disinfect the most amount of uh, area possible. Uh, as you can see, the arm, uh, the, the fogger can uh, create a, a 40 degree cloud. And that is something that we use in, in, some, in some path planning projects we had. Uh, the design was made in Fusion 360. Uh, that was very helpful for us because at one time in the project, we have 10 collaborators uh, designing at the same time. Uh, the electronics and uh, the electronics, uh, the, our main board is an NVIDIA Jason NX, which is an arm based food accelerated platform. Uh, it's a very low power they can, that's uh, specifically designed for mobile robots. And uh, the cool acceleration can really. Uh, Say, set them aside because uh, things like image processing are much more quicker than a uh, similarly priced or similarly power spec platforms. Also, it's a, it, 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 it chips with a Ubuntu-based operating system, which is very important for us since we, have, yeah, we run ROS on it and it's something that works better uh, while, when using ROS. We had to create a, a, some custom boards. First, the, the rover uh, platform requires serial communication. And we made a simple uh, breakout board uh, that can uh, allow uh, the conversion of serial to USB. Then uh, we also created a, um, a low level controller. This was fabricated uh, professionally. Uh, they, they allow for motor control and for some servo and valve control that uh, we plan to use in, in the robots to automate the uh, refilling of the tank. And we, the power, the, the battery was a high, high capacity uh, lithium iron phosphate battery. Uh, we chose a uh, lithium iron phosphate because it was a one of the safest technology there are, and it's one of the uh, better priced technology there, there are too. They are very robust. And to uh, split off in the different voltage levels we need, uh, we use uh, some DC to DC converters. The cameras, we use an array of, uh, an array from RealSense. We use uh, the T265, which is a camera for visual slam is integrated all uh, within the module and it's very low power. And that saves us uh, uh, some uh, computer resources. The same with uh, the RealSense D35i, D435i, which provides a point clouds and depth image. That is used for mapping and, and uh, obstacle avoidance. 
software and control for uh, we use a Rust based system. Uh, and in Rust, uh, we implemented a navigation stack that is very similar to uh, Steve Masensky uh, paper, uh, 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 Marathon 2. And the stack cons uh, consists of a, a local planner uh, based on the time elastic band by Rossman yeah, et al. Uh, TU Dorman. This also use a global uh, planner called NAVFN by the same implementation of ASTAR. It also use a, a, a cloud gen a generating and SLAM package called RTAB map, which is a real time appearance based map, a matching algorithm. And it's very useful for this sort of dev cameras. And uh, we use uh, packages in, uh, provided by RealSense to uh, use uh, the, all the, uh, the capabilities of the camera. And we also implemented a few uh, custom nodes. We, we made up uh, several ARM controllers for different uh, operation nodes. We, we made an automatic, an automatic mode that can cycle the ARM. Uh, we made a manual control arm that can be uh, positioned precisely with a, a controller. And we made also an, 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 an autonomous mode that, that can read uh, two waypoints, one for the body of the robot and another for the uh, position or the orientation of the arm. That's very useful for planning and automating a lot of tasks. And a forward controller that can uh, safely operate the forward. The forward requires some sort of some special uh, sequences to operate. And our testing, we tested our design in a local market. This is called the San Felipe Neri Market. It's in it's downtown of Panama. And here uh, we use uh, by the recommendation quaternary ammonium based disinfectant, which is food safe. Our, the whole idea of this test was to test our deployment time. And we measured a 30 minute deployment time from uh, uh, parking the car to the robot running. And a lot of data was captured, particularly because the floor was reflective and we needed to develop a way to go around a reflective floor and, uh, and those type of surfaces. We also uh, discovered a lot of our weaknesses mostly in communications because we can rely on the local uh, Wi-Fi network. And our current efforts uh, are we planning uh, making a generic algorithm for optimal trajectory planning. And this algorithm uh, is something that is in the, that is in the works, uh, but it's something that can be they can extend our current uh, uh, work. There's also a very important need for improving our UI and UX because uh, right now only software engineers can use the robot. And there's an, a very important, uh, very important reasons to make a uh, migration to Rust 2, uh, mostly reliability and scalability. And uh, that's all our my presentation. Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, thank you for thank you for uh, important uh, proposal. Okay, so do you have a question or comment from audience? So really, no question. Okay. So uh, is it is uh, is a robot uh, have a f uh, no? Uh, do you do you employ is any feedback controller using uh, external sensor? Uh, feedback controller. Yeah, it's a feedback controller. Well. Uh, uh to 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 decide is a uh, what to say and uh, 
uh, position of the robot and so on? Yes, uh, yeah, the navigation stack included uh, a lot of... Uh, yeah, real-time feedback control. Yes, uh, the, uh, the voxel layer of the navigation stack uh, was constantly read by a lot of controllers, particularly the time elastic man. And that uh, representation of boxes uh, as surfaces, as, as obstacles, uh, allowed the time elastic band to uh, really uh, avoid these obstacles and, and ensuring uh, minimal time. So uh, as the only sensor we had in, uh, on board was those two cameras, and that's the only one and uh, the, the only way uh, we could uh, sense the world. Also, uh, the tracking camera, the T265, uh, uh, is constantly uh, monitoring drift in, in paths and also uh, is corrected by the local planner. OK, thank you. So is there any question, as a question? OK. So uh, thank you very much for us presentation. Thank you very much. I'm very proud to be here. And this is uh, uh, okay. So we conclude the uh, this session. Uh, it's very long session. And uh, thank you for uh, thank you for contributing this session. Uh, and uh, as uh, and tomorrow uh, next tomorrow sessions uh, will be started at the oh. Uh, to, in UTC in Europe, I think uh, uh, six a.m. or oh, very rush, a very early morning. So uh, please wake up early morning and uh, uh, taking uh, so eating eating uh, uh, some morning uh, breakfast. And uh, as uh, Japanese time or or it's uh, uh, three a.m. three p.m. So uh, please uh, take uh, take part in the uh, tomorrow session. Okay, thank you very much. Nakamura-san, thank you very much. Ah, thank you very much. Sorry. Fast, isn't it? Early morning.